Good day, everybody. Good morning. Hi there. Good afternoon. Or Hello. morning or evening. Let's wait one more minute or something, and then uh, we can get started. All right, let's get started. Um, let me see. I think the automatic recording has been stopped or no, 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 it is recording. Yeah, okay, perfect. So welcome everyone to the Ocean JavaScript Working Group call of June 1st. Um, uh, I need to remember you to abide by the Hyperledge Code of Conduct and the antitrust policy. Um, if you'd like to add yourself to the attendees list, feel free to do so. Um, I'll post link again in chat um, and then we can uh, get started. Is there anyone new here today that would like to introduce themselves or share what they're working on? All right, I think I uh, recognize most names. Um, so, um, we have quite a lot of things on the agenda for today to discuss. Um, but first, let's do some um, status updates. I, I removed some ones that, that haven't been discussed uh, for a while or like for past events. Um, did the Ares Bifold call uh, uh, happen this week? And then does anyone have to have an update on that? No, I think on this week, there wasn't any by fault call. Okay. Ares call, I can give a quick update. Uh, 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 this, there was a discussion, like the continued discussion on um, um, uh, like uh, moving Ares to the Open Wallet Foundation. Um, and um, uh, yeah, what we need to do, and I think that uh, it mainly uh, this time was discussed like the difference between agents and wallets, um, uh, and what the um, uh, like is the difference uh, important? Um, are we like having um, too much? Yeah, uh, are we putting too much effort in the naming and maybe it doesn't matter that much? Um, and like there was a good discussion on like what is an agent versus a wallet. I think agents um, went more, people saw agents more of like things that um, like the protocols you use and the interactions you have. Well, wallet is more for storing credentials, holding keys, that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know if anyone that attended as well uh, wants to add something on this. 
Yeah, I I, I like uh, an example that someone gave gave that about the, the phone, right? The, we we are still calling our phones phones, <laughs> but actually they are computers. Like I, I mean, that they're complete personal computers. Let's say because uh, at this moment, uh, as, as he said. Uh, the phone is just an app inside the 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 mobile device let's say but we are still calling it phone and and, and we are all fine with that right so yeah i i i think that we are very purist on the naming on the on what's an agent and what's a wallet but everybody understands and and calls it a, a wallet, even if probably it does more than just keeping credentials or keys. So maybe yeah, it's it's okay if we if we just use that name and and that's it, which could be something that could be more in line with uh, moving on uh, this uh, areas effort to to open wallet foundation. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, cool. Uh, did Comfy too. Um, I don't know what, I know there's a, some PRs open and I, um, I haven't, I don't have a full update on like what's the status. So um, let me see, there is, um, test for DipConfi2 message packing and splitting the demo up in two parts. Um, Artem, could you give a short update? Is this PR ready to, to merge? Uh, I believe yes. I resolved all comments you left. Uh, there shouldn't be any issues now. And okay. uh, regarding the second PR for them, uh, uh, as we discussed last week, uh, there is lack of demos, and uh, instead of uh, making general demo more harder and adding cases and options, I decided to split it uh, into two set of scripts. Uh, so old one uh, is preserved as before, uh, same actions, and DITCOMV1 is used, and for DITCOMV2, there is a sep, uh, independent uh, couple of scripts for Alice and Faber, uh, which currently is doing just a ping message. Okay, yeah, you, you thought like, uh, um, because adding options um, like to the main demo, to the main screen, you, you, that was getting too cluttered or something, or uh, what's the, why did you change it to two? I, I think it must, will be more clear uh, if you're interested in one particular feature and want to see how in action, uh, you may, can just draw a single one. Okay, yeah. Um, and and so like it's it's based on the same foundation, right? So if we add a feature to one demo, we can also easily add it to another uh, demo. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sounds good. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, try to uh, take a look at it uh, as well with the other uh, PR. If somebody else also wants to give it a review, then uh, uh, PR. 4070. Um, cool. Okay. Any other things about Bitcoin V2 you want to, to, to share? Nothing from my side. Okay. Um, and if these two PRs are merged, what do you say is the, the work that is left for DitConv2? Do you think it's ready to, to be merged into main then or? Uh, as I told before, I took uh, the old branch and uh, general, uh, kept uh, general uh, structure regarding the two versions of, versions of message uh, out of band changes which 
are not part of the standard. Uh, so if you're okay with it, uh, as it was in December, uh, we can merge uh, in main. But if you uh, if you have some uh, better vision how to make connections and send message between, uh, we can work on it and improve. Yeah, because the can you can you reiterate quickly what the issue was with connections and out of bands? Um, it's been a while. Uh, just uh, from the inviter side, you can create uh, an invitation out of band invitation according v2 standard. Uh, from another side, you can just accept it and make an instant uh, object uh, which is in ready state, and you can uh, send message. Uh, from the NVT to inviter only for now. Uh, and that's it. This is whole flow. Uh, there is no any kind of git exchange uh, between parties uh, in the git to specification. Yeah, uh, but I think there are like y y there's no need to do data exchange with difficult V2, right? So uh, what's the non-standardized approach here? Uh, yeah, you can just uh, reply directly to the DID of the message sender. Yeah. So, sorry, I'm I'm, I'm not fully uh, understanding what is the like the uh, thing that's deviating from the standards because the DITCOM V2 spec defines like the out of band um, invitations and there's no data exchange, but you can just create a connection directly based on on the DIDs that you share. Uh, so if, if I give you uh, my DIT and you store that and you create your own DIT, then basically we have a connection um, um, that we can create a connection record from, for example. Um, so uh, what's the difference from what's defined in a DITCOM V2 spec? Uh, just for right now, connection will be created from the NVT site only. Invite our, uh will not will not be able to send message back in the current implementation okay so when we receive a message we don't create a connection record as far as i remember yeah okay yeah um yeah i think that makes sense somehow because um if like if you create the invitation, you have your own DIT, but you don't have the um, uh, the DIT of the other party yet. Um, so then you could create like a a record, or you you couldn't do it. But we probably need to have like changes in core that like you can work more often without a connection record and just do like DIT um, uh, DIT com based messaging, which doesn't necessarily require a connection uh, probably. Maybe if you can, um, um, for next week, if you could give a short presentation on how it works and, and what's available, I think that that will help um, a lot in uh, understanding uh, like how it was left uh, in November um, uh, and see like, uh, yeah, how the, what the state is, how it works, what is possible and what is it. Would you be able to do that? Yes, I think I can. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Be great. Awesome. Okay. Um, then let's head on to the um, agenda for today. Um, I have added uh, some things um, uh, on giving an update on uh, uh, JWT credentials, extended crypto support, and OpenID for VC support. Um, some things about the AFJ 040 release and uh, the topic that we discussed last, last week on making it easier for people to get started with AFJ. Uh, and also some thoughts about like rethinking the storage layer. Are there any specific topics people would like to see discussed today? Yeah. Maybe not a real topic, but just a quick question. 
Timo about uh, in the shared libraries. So yeah, yesterday I tested a fixed set Berndt published uh, for an Uncreds package. Uh, so I just want to clarify it. Uh, uh, do you plan to release uh, such fix for other two libraries or uh, I need to test something further? They um, have been released. Already? Yeah, today. Yeah, thanks. That's great. So yeah, I will try all three libraries and uh, come back to you with some results. Awesome. Cool, thanks. Yeah, uh, we intend to um, uh, parent made all the updates and now it should work for everything. So one final thing we wanted to do is like run it in the, also in the bifold um, uh, update branch, run it uh, one final time with like the migration script and everything. Um, and if that uh, seems to work out, I hope to do that today still. Um, then we'll make the stable release for all the shared components, and then we make the AFJ zero for zero release. Uh, I could, I'll get to that, uh, uh, yeah, for this point a bit more, but it should be done. Yes, sounds great. Thank you, guys. Cool. Um, all right. Um, I thought I would make some slides for today uh, for the topics uh, we want to discuss. Uh, might be doing this more often some slides because i think it can help um uh, with yeah just giving some general updates of all the work that's ongoing because there's a lot being merged uh, uh oftentimes and and um yeah i think discussing that in some slides that i could can also share in the discord makes it also easier for people that don't attend these calls to stay up to date um yeah so uh intention to do that more uh need to see how it goes in terms of like time uh, uh and preparation with it um but so what we want to discuss for today is uh update on the jwtvc's extended crypto support fj zero for zero release making it easier for people to get started with fj and retaking the storage layer i also added a, a pdf of this presentation to the uh meeting notes if you want to see them so um Recently, we've been um, doing a lot of work on adding uh, JSON Web Token Verifier credentials, um, which is um, basically W3C Verifier credentials that adhere to the PC data model, um, but in JWT format. So we already supported JSONLD uh, credential uh, support, where we use uh, linked data signatures um, and JSON of denormalization and canonicalization um, to get the input for signatures and, and have all the features that JSON of D has to offer. Um, and now we also extended that with JWT VCs. Um, and basically, a JWT VC is a JSON web token, um, um, which under the hood is a JSON web signature. Um, and um, with a JSON web token, you make a signature over a JSON object. Um, which you then encode as a string um, uh, and that you can share. So the normal representation for a JSON web token PC is then also a string. Um, um, so I think benefit of JWT VCs is that it's simple. If you support JSON web signatures or JSON web tokens, you can basically create a, a JSON web token and there's a lot of JSON web token libraries out there. So you need to support the VC data model and know how to map them. Um, and there's some complexity there, but I think compared for, to JSON-LD signatures, uh, this is really simple um, because yeah, you're basically just signing a JSON object, uh, uh, yeah, which need to adhere to a certain data model. Um, so now in the W2C credential service, uh, you can uh, sign uh, JWT VCs and you can also store them. And when you um, query, credentials you can query both um, and they have like a format property so you can distinguish between linked data proof credentials and jwt credentials um, and there's a normalized representation so uh, a w3c credential class that can basically both and then you have uh, like a, a specific jwt credential class and a json of the credential class that adds the the properties that are different between the two but so you can when you, for example, want to build a wallet with it, you would use like the normalized representation 
which means you have like a common interface between the two and you don't have to care really about what type of credential uh, you're working with. Um, and it integrates with the JWS service in AFJ and that means that all the uh, JSON web algorithms supported in AFJ and like the crypto the wallet supports um, will be supported for JWT PCs. So currently with Oscar, um, that will be ES256 and Edwards digital signing algorithm. For Indy, it will only be Edward, in the SDK, it will only be Edwards digital signing algorithm. Um, but like adding more will now be a lot easier because um, like you don't have to implement another signature suit as with uh, JSONLD, but if your wallet supports the, like the signing of the algorithm, then um, that is enough. So I think uh, adding more, if you have custom needs that um, will be easier over time. And I think especially with the wallet refactoring that we want to do in the next version, um, um, it becomes even more easier to extend which crypto the wallet supports. Um, by the way, if anyone has questions, please please raise your voice. I, I, I can't really see a, a, a chat or, or anything, so feel free to interrupt me. Um, so how does it look like is, let's say you have a credential, very simple credential here. Um, credential that is issued by the example and that is uh, issued to this dead key. Um, you transform it to a, a credential instance. And this is like the, the, the representation that's common between the two. And then you specify the format. So JWT VC and you specify uh, the algorithm uh, that will be used for the, the JSON web signature. Um, if you want to do JSON LD, you, well, I, I use this one here, but like there's a, a, a shared class. So that is just JWT credential service where you can do a donor format. And then instead of an ALK uh, or an ALK, uh, you provide the proof type, which is then the signature suit. So ED25, signature 28. So the API changes are like the, the, the shared API between the two credential formats is, is yeah, uh, as much as possible, but there are some differences between the formats, which um, yeah, uh, we didn't abstract. Um, Just we also a added, quick, quick, yeah. quick question. Um, if we want to add uh, JWT with selective disclosure, uh, do you think that that would be a new format or uh, another input field that would be like these fields are selectively disclosable or uh, just on a whole other design? Or didn't you think about it yet? <laughs> I think it will be a new format because um, for issuers and or like mainly for holders and verifiers to be able to understand the credential, they would need to understand selective disclosure JWT. So um, I think it, it would be a separate format. And that's, I think also what I see from, I think OpenID, if they want to add it, it will be a separate format that you add there because there's just differences in it. But um, it will be, it can lean heavily on the implementation we already have. Um, yeah, so we added the JW key uh, support. Uh, this is something that we needed uh, for a project we're doing. Um, it's basically a, uh, it's very similar to did key. Um, however, uh, in this case, you encode a JSON web key into a, uh, well, into a did, not really into a did document. And um, based uh, on that, you, uh, you can base 64 decode the, the did identifier and that will just have like a JSON object which re represents uh, a JSON web key. So the nice thing is everything that the JSON web key spec supports can be encoded uh, as it did, which means you could also uh, support like uh, X509 certificates if you want to do that. Um, um, but very similar in nature to did key. Um, so if you want to look at the spec, you can uh, yeah look here. Um, so then next is openly for verified credentials. This was already added a while ago uh, by uh, Kareem and it's built on top of uh, Spherion's OpenID uh, for VC libraries. Um, and initial implementation um, supported JSON-LD credentials and um, ED25519 signature 2018. Um, and it is now 
um, extended to also support JWT credentials and it supports the more, more crypto types. Basically everything, again, what the JWS service, the signature suit reg registry supports. Um, so um, yeah, when we make additions to AFJ and like whatever key types and signature suits are supported, the open and even verify credentials will also support it. Um, and especially if we make the API for extending the wallet key types and the elk that you can support better, then um, yeah, it, it becomes really easy to use it with crypto suits that aren't natively supported in AFJ. Um, still only support receiving credentials, not issuing them. So it's like a client for receiving credentials. We want to add an issuer, uh, but um, yeah, haven't had a need for it ourselves yet. Um, um, and we need, yeah, we need to expose more HTTP endpoints and such. So yeah, we, yeah, needs more work. Um, yeah, it doesn't support Anacred credentials. Uh, um, it could, I think. They had it in the OpenID for VCI spec in the beginning, but I think they removed it now. Maybe it, it can be added like as an optional uh, um, extension. But I think for now, if you want to issue Anacred credentials, uh, yeah, you should stick um, with DITCOM. Um, and it also integrates with the DIT resolver registrar, so it can be used with any DIT method that is supported by AFJ or that you register in there. So you can implement your own DIT method and it can work with the open for verifier credentials. So quick example of how that looks again. Let's say you create a uh, DIT um, JWK uh, DIT. Um, what you can do then is, um, it's a bit of a long method, but um, you can call when you have like an offer from a QR code, uh, you have the QR code data, which is often open ID initiate issuance and it specifies an issuer. And this is like a, a very long encoded JSON object. Um, you can request a credential and you can specify exactly what you want to uh, support. And I think the tricky part here is that um, in the process of request credential, there are, um, um, yeah, there needs to be some negotiation or like matching happening because what algorithms and credential formats and bit methods does the issuer support and what credential formats and signature algorithms do we as a wallet support? Um, and then there's also maybe the limitation is that I as a wallet um, support more, but I only want to receive, for example, JWT credentials. Um, so. Here you can specify um, a limit like which credential formats, proof of procession um, algorithms are used. So for example, only JWT VCs or only want to use Edwards digital signing algorithm. Um, if you don't provide this, it will just pick whatever the agent supports and that can it will dynamically um, infer that. So if you uh, register your custom signature suits, then it will take that into account uh, when requesting a match that against what the issuer supports. Um, this one is um, um, to resolve a verification method for the proof of possession. And in the previous implementation, there was a kit that you had to pass, like a key ID. Um, um, but because there needs to happen, like that matching needs to happen, um, we basically need to make it dynamic uh, because, um, for example, the issuer could support um, uh, AdWords digital signing algorithm, I couldn't use then a, um, a DIT that uses key type P256. Uh, uh, so if I were to give this DIT up front, it will throw an error because there's like a mismatch. Um, what uh, this allows to do is basically it asks you to provide dynamically the DIT or the, the key inside a DIT document that you want to use for this exchange. And it, um, tries to give you all the information you need to do that. So it gives you a credential format, which can be data with TVC, link data, proof VC. Um, it says which uh, algorithm um, uh, that will be used. So that can be Edward's digital signing algorithm or ES256, um, which verification methods could be associated with that. So that is, um, if you have, uh, uh, ED255 uh, or like e Edwards digital signing algorithm, you can use an, um, an ED25519 verification key 2018 or an ED25519 verification key 2020 or a JSON web key. So there's multiple verification methods that you could use. Key type, um, 
this is like which credential the issuer will issue. And it also has like a supported DIT method. And it could say like, I, the issuer can say I support DIT web. It can also say I support all DIT methods. Um, and based on this, you can then return, all right, I, I'm going to use this key. Um, yeah. So that's how I use the uh, OpenFCI client. Um, yeah, I hope to, to build it out uh, more over time. Um, and currently, um, we're expanding the work to also support Cyop v2 and OpenV for VP. And that will basically allow us to share and prove credentials um, um, using these protocols. And that's under the hood that uses the diff presentation exchange. Um, um, so currently, we can receive the credentials, but there's no way to share them yet. Um, and this will allow um, to do that. Um, yeah, in general, it works by the other party sends an authorization request to you as a self-issued OpenID provider. Your wallet responds uh, with a verifiable presentation um, uh, and the verifier checks that. Um, yeah, I will, we can do a, a bit more of an in-depth session on like how the SIOP and OpenID for VP work and exactly the implementation AFJ. Um, still working on that, but quite complex specifications if you look at if presentation exchange, then you need to understand OpenE for VP and Cyop V2. So uh, it probably warrants uh, uh, a presentation on itself. Uh, cool. So then next, uh, is there anything else, anything on like the updates on Cyop Open VC, JWT VCs before we move on? Yeah, I guess just uh, a general question about what the time horizon for those features looks like relative to the AFJ release cadence? Yeah, uh, so the OpenE for VCI with JWT VC support is already in May and it will be released with 040. Styop V2 and OpenE for VP is, we're now starting to work on it and we need it um, quite soon for some projects, but as we're still quite an experience with the specs. We're first going to create a implementation, see how it works, and then we want to contribute it to AFJ. Um, that implementation that we built, can we we can share sooner already, but uh, yeah, we want to make sure that the implementation is correct. Um, but I think, so let's say in a month, we definitely have an implementation. After that, um, uh, we will start looking at contributing it back. But um, I think so uh, somewhere between one to two, two months, uh, this should be uh, merged into AFJ. Beautiful, thank you. Cool. Um, then on the AFJ 040 release, um, general question, I think, when is it going to happen? Um, well, Berndt already mentioned that updates to all the shared components have been finished now, uh, released for all the different Ares Oscar, UniPDR, Anocrats RS, seems to be working. Uh, there was a hell of a job, but um, so I think the, the, the answer is uh, around now. Um, as I said, we need to do the um, final test in Bifold, but um, I really think we can get it released this week um, and I'll do my best uh, to do that. And then um, afterwards we can look at um, further improvements to uh, yeah everything. I think we can do patch releases, uh, um, et cetera. Um, um, so I think the, we can make the zero one release of the shared components uh, today after I've tested it for the final thing in React Native. Um, then we'll release AFJ for, for zero. If the versions have been updated to a stable version, um, I'll switch the documentation to make zero for zero the current version instead of the next version. Um, and there are still a lot of things to do, but we can do that with incremental patch and, and uh, releases. Um, so some notes I want to make about zero for zero and uh, uh, um, curious to hear input about this, but I think to make the uh, updates that we can make and have planned um, go the smoothest and not have issues for features that are quite new. Um, 
I think there are some features that I would want to mark as experimental and are just not subject to breaking changes and sample releases. And that if you use them, you know, like you're using an experimental feature. Um, and um, one of them is implementing your own Anocrats registry or the Anocrats service implementation. So um, using the default implementation provided by um, um, the Airstream with JavaScript repo. So based on India SDK, Anocrats RS, and also like all the registries that are implemented in AFJ, which are the, the India SDK, uh, in the VDR and checked. I think those are covered because also if we make breaking changes, we can just um, update them internally in our repo and, and that won't um, cause issues. I think um, external implementations, we can probably wait for a bit. Um, so we have some time to, to uh, stabilize the API. Um, I think all the shared component libraries, although we have done like, um, a lot of work to make sure it works on all platforms. Like, um, sure, when we're going to release them, there are going to be issues. We also have some issues still with Node 16 and need to have a patch. So I want to mark them as experimental. Um, and also the Open for VC client and JWT VCs because they're just landed. Um, and I think there will be some issues that may cause breaking changes because it's just very new. Um, it doesn't say you shouldn't use them, but know that like, uh, a zero for one release could introduce potentially a breaking change. Um, um, all right, Baron mentioned strongly agree, make the ex experimental. So um, that's good to hear. I think we should probably add the section to the doc somewhere that like these features are experimental. Don't expect them to be covered by, um, yeah, the semantic versioning. Um, and I think multi-tenancy also, uh, we had it in previous version as well and it works, but it isn't fully integrated yet with the update assistant and, and um, takes some more work. Um, and I don't want to delay the release of uh, the next version just because of this. Um, I think we can um, fix that after uh, the release. So um, some other notes is the India SDK to ASCA migration script has limitations and that it is mainly focused on holder verifier role migration in React Native. So it does work in Node.js, but issuer records are not migrated, which is an important thing to know. If you don't have issuer records, so a mediator, for example, you can migrate from in the SDK to Oscar, but if you have created schemas and credential definitions, et cetera, those are not covered by the migration script yet. I think we can easily, um, uh, at that, uh, but yeah, we haven't had time to do that yet. Um, and multi-tenancy is not supported also yet for the INSK to ask our migration because we don't have to do just one wallet, but a lot of wallets that um, um, need to be uh, migrated and it requires extra logic. Um, if you need one of these, please let us know. And if you want to contribute that also, please let us know. I can, we can uh, yeah, provide some guidance on like what needs to happen, uh, but yeah there needs to be some time investment to get these things working. Uh, but I think most people are using AFJ with uh, uh, in the SDK and React Native right now for holder slash verifier wallet. So I think that use case is covered. And if you're using it for mediator, that use case is also covered. Um, any final notes on the AFJ 0 for 0 release questions, remarks? Yeah, I, I have just a question uh, about the. <clears throat> you you say that that the, the experimental features are not uh, part of the same version. Uh, how are you uh, marking them as experimental in the in the commits or or, or is yeah it, that's it's a concept. I don't know. <laughs> okay. um, do you have a good idea? I think adding it to the documentation. We could probably add it to the classes or something. I don't know if, if this code has good hinting for that. Um, um, but yeah, um, don't really know. Uh, so if you have okay, good okay, <laughs> okay, okay. So we we have to to do some some research on on it. <laughs> yeah, I just don't want people to expect that like all these new features are going to work perfectly out of the box, um, and that we need some time to iterate on them um to get them working properly um yeah 
um, yeah, I think we can add like JS doc experimental. I think we should update it, add it to the migration guide. Uh, I think we should add it to the installation docs, like um, just add a lot of pointers about like when you see, um, when you are installing or upgrading, you get pointers like, hey, these features are experimental. Um, I think for modules, we could probably um, make them um, uh, add like an experimental um, thing. Uh, but I think that only works if the module as a whole is experimental. And some of these are like um, partially uh, uh, experimental, which for example, JWT VCs. Maybe you can add like a, a trace log in the constructor when it's created to log like it's an experimental module that is enabled or something or service. That's, I think, a very good, yeah. Uh, adding logs, like debug logs uh, or something or info logs, like warning yeah. is an experimental feature. Um, I also had a question regarding the migration. Um, because I assume some agents in their configuration, they have to auto migrate on startup now uh, on Node.js. And if they update uh, to 0 for 0, what, what will happen? Will it just say like, we can't upgrade you to, to SCAR or will it uh, not even try? Um, the auto update storage on startup is uh, separate from the oh. SCAR migration script. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. you should know because you wrote it. <laughs> yeah, I remember now. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, so I think that is a bit of a clumsy uh, experience that you have to do them separately, but I think like migrating from a very specific database type to another one is just not something we can integrate into the core update system without like making it way too complex. Um, and this is like a one-time thing um, people have to do. Um, yeah, uh, I think yeah, that, that is covered sense. by the uh, by the docs uh, already. I also, if I remember now, I think if you try to run it in Node.js, it just uh, errors or it's, uh, we had to enable something for tests. Uh, I will check it I again. I think we warn uh, because Ariel also wanted it to work, for example, for his mediator. Um, so we uh, provide a warning, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, um, I actually do think if it detects a credential definition record, it uh, restores and it uh, throws an error. So if you have like a an issuer and you try to update it, 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 it won't. If you have any records, it won't change. It won't, doesn't support yet. Well. Wow. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, a uh, question in chat is, when there are plans to update the AFJ extensions like push notifications. Um, yeah, I think there are pull requests open already in, in um, let me see if I can, uh, to update those. I know if Moritz is on the call. Moritz, which you, you made updates for the some of those packages already, right? Yeah, yeah me and me. Um, so push notification and Redux store. Okay, yeah, okay. So the, not the uh, React hooks yet. Um, if there's a volunteer uh, to do that, um, uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, that, that would be uh, uh, helpful. I think the changes between them are not so much uh, because we are using currently AFJ 040 with the old React hooks version, I believe. And that uh, works just fine. Besides that, we get like a warning of um, um, uh, like, hey, you have an incorrect version of AFJ, but like there's not a lot of breaking changes to the API. So I think uh, with a small version update, um, that should be covered. Uh, okay, let's continue. Um, I'm quickly going to skip by this topic because I want to get to the, the last topic. Um, and uh, I'll pick this up in chat or see if we get to it at the end. Um, but um, 
One thing um, I want to discuss is uh, if we can maybe rethink the storage in aerosolic JavaScript. This has been a topic um, I've been thinking of lately, and I also um, had some discussions with Ariel on um, storage and limitations that it has, and um, in some cases, whether like the complexity that we have in storage right now is not necessarily needed. Um, so to give some context is that by default, AFJ um, used in the SDK as the storage layer. Um, now we also uh, support Eric's Oscar in the latest version, which is basically the storage from in the SDK and Eric's Oscar are very similar um, in their nature. Um, they store an encrypted blob of data by, get, by category, for example, a connection record and an ID, which in our case is often a UUID. Um, you add tags which are also encrypted, so you can query the records. Um, so we can find records based on a role or a certain thread ID in an exchange. Um, and it also supports unencrypted text to be able to do advanced queries, which you can do greater than, uh, less than, like, um, but those are currently not supported in AFJ. So you're really restricted to the text, the encrypted text to query things. Um, and, um, you also need to specifically define the tags on a record. So if you have a property that you didn't add as a tag, you can't query on it until you like add the, the tag, which often means you have to uh, like retrieve the record, decrypt it, restore it and add the tags. Um, so um, um, some of the limitations that we have like with this is that um, it being an encrypted block, Basically, we JSON stringify um, the record and then store the string that is then encrypted and stored as bytes in the database. Um, and that makes it hard with concurrent processes modifying the same data. I think one um, example is like incrementing counters. Um, for example, for anocrit revocation, we need to keep track of like what is the current um, index that is used. Um, and I think in a lot of like cases you could do, um, um, you can plus one in a normal database and it will just add one to the latest counter. And so if there's multiple things right into it, that, that will go right. But um, if you do it on like retrieve the whole record um, and um, have the JSON, then you overwrite basically the whole JSON record. Um, and so if there's multiple processes reading and writing from it, that um, um, will cause issues. Um, as per Edgar supports locking, which helps in this case, uh, because you could lock while you are going to update it and you want to increment the counter, you will lock the record and say like, hey, nobody touch it until I'm done updating and then the next one can um, uh, update the record. But that doesn't allow for concurrent work. It mostly allows for uh, uh, um, sequential work uh, where you can be sure you're not like conflicting uh, uh, with each other. Um, and it's also like an, uh, um, hard to do selectively updating values. So instead of like saying this value, I want to now be this is um, you need to overwrite the whole record. So if you uh, read the record and in the meantime, one value is updated and then you write the record again, then you overwrite that whole data. So you really need to, uh, to lock data, which means you uh, yeah, can do any concurrent processing on records we have in AFJ. Um, so uh, another limitation is that like there's a whole custom encryption layer built in with uh, querying and everything. While most um, um, uh, uh, yeah, databases already support encryption out of the box. Um, so it should be, are we reinventing the wheel? But I apparently wrote re-implementing the wheel. Um, um, we're creating a custom encryption layer with database um, um, well, there's already solutions out there that are probably solving this in a better way because the main purpose of a database is to be fast and, and um, provide all the things you need from uh, a database. Um, in addition, in the current model, like migration of records is hard. Uh, you need to retrieve them, decrypt them, update and re-encrypt because you can't do like, you can't do migrations say like, okay, all these values now need to change or we have a new column um, that needs to have this default value. Um, so that adds uh, more complexity. Um, 
I think there's another thing that there's no good way to do sorting and pagination because everything is encrypted. Um, and uh, if you want to sort by date, for example, there's really no way besides retrieving all records um, and um, uh, then filtering them locally, or you need to use um, uh, unencrypted tags, which would work for this. Um, but um, uh, in that case, uh, you need to know beforehand which data you're going to sort on because um, you need to have that tag available. And otherwise you still need to retrieve all records, restore them at that tag, which like it's, it's yeah, can be a complex process. Um, I got pagination is supported based on offset and limit, but there's no good way to handle uh, um, uh, with changes in the data set that you're querying. So if new records are added, then um, offset and limit don't always provide like a good way to retrieve data, um, um, which oftentimes use cursors for, or, or other things, but that is not supported. So um, you always need to take into account that the data you're querying, you might get duplicate records or you might miss records when there are records being added and removed in the meantime. Um, I think some of these li limitations have previously been like, Ariel sent me this today and I thought like uh, uh, it was an interesting uh, take on um, basically why um, this model worked is because the assumption was that you would always uh, um, query records in like where there's two to three items, not hundreds or thousands, which I think for wallets in most cases makes sense. Um, but even if you have like, if you have like want to build a chat application, um, uh, you're gonna have a lot of records which you want to sort and then you all have to retrieve them um, um, from the database. Um, so I think, and especially in cloud environments, um, this doesn't hold up at all because there's a lot of records. Um, Uh, let me see, does querying also become a limiting factor as record numbers increase? Yeah, I think in general with the database, if you have more rows, um, um, you add more, uh, yeah, it, it becomes slower um, because if you need to do sorting in database and such, you still have to, like the database needs to know about all the records um, in the database. Um, I think what doesn't help in the case of, for example, Eris Oscar is that um, all data is stored in a single table where you have like a category and an ID. So um, um, you don't have separate tables for separate records, which means that if you're querying for a certain uh, category, um, uh, you're still querying from the same table. And I think normally you can create indexes on specific rows that you query quite often that makes those queries quicker, which I think is like also hard to do in this case because you're storing on, um, uh, yeah, you're, you're have, you have a very limited database model because you just need to account for, okay, we have like stringified uh, 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 blob, we have tags that we can index, um, but like the data model is not very representative of the data. So I think that doesn't help, uh, but yeah, it becomes slower when you uh, uh, add more records. Uh, oh. What am I doing? Uh, yeah, so I think we're almost out of time, but I can go quickly. Um, so um, I think it has been raised in the past already. I think maybe by Warren, was that you, uh, about using normal databases? It could be, I don't recall that. But um, certainly there are like encryption extensions for SQLite in like typo RM and things like that. Okay, yeah. yeah, I think it was one of the first calls you joined, you, you uh, raised this and it uh, uh, is a thought that hasn't le left my mind since. Um, but like, um, yeah, can we use normal databases and optionally leverage the native encryption features that the database provides but that also makes it optional. So if you really need performance and um, for example, if you have a mediator uh, where most of the messages you queue are already um, uh, encrypted or like there's not that much reason to um, uh, encrypt data when it's not um, 
uh, highly sensitive information, I think you maybe don't need uh, uh, encryption. And I'm just talking about the data here. Like I'm, I'm not talking about S card storing the keys. I think that's an, another problem we should solve, but like storing data separate here from storing keys that you use for um, encryption, decryption, signing, et cetera. So for example, SQLite has a native uh, um, or not a native, SQLite has an encryption extension, um, but also for example, cloud providers, um, uh, this is what Google Cloud uh, mentions on their page is that cloud as to our customers data is encrypted when stored in database tables. Um, so it's encrypted by default if you use um, uh, Google Cloud. So um, when you use Google Cloud with Oscar, you have basically double encryption on your data. Um, and sure, like this date, this encryption is different because uh, with Oscar, you can have different profiles, different wallets, but in a lot of cases, I'm not sure if that is really needed. Um, so some of the benefits that we can get is we can use all features from uh, normal databases, what they have to provide, better support for migration of records, um, normalization of data. We don't just store like a string of JSON object, but we can really look at like what should the database structure be, uh, better sorting, uh, filtering based on like uh, uh, statements. We can have better pagination based on cursors um, um, and probably better performance as we're building on top of the database that's optimized to be fast. I think both in the case of using an unencrypted, but also using encryption features from a database. Um, so um, I think- um, I have a question, I guess, yeah. um, which is you know, about the, the, the scope of what you're att attempting to, the, the scope of the problem that you wanna try and solve is the database we're talking about here simply for like like key management and credential storage, or are we talking about application needs above and beyond that as well, which uh, AFJ wouldn't necessarily know about itself? Like, are we trying to provide an abstraction for all of that, or is it just is it more constrained? I think more constrained to the agent features. Um... Uh, so not KMS or like key management necessarily. I think that we should separate it more and, and solve that in a different way because I think there's different needs for them. Um, but I do think like having the storage model and 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 um, making it more pluggable. I, I know, for example, Ferramo has like for every type of record you can you can decide what type of database you want to plug in. So if you have like um, really high volume records, you can like make your own. Um, um, implementation for it that some are maybe stored in a in a Redis cache and others are stored in a database. Um, and so I think we should be more flexible and 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 providing more to like traditional ways of storing data instead of like having the your database and wallet needs to be encrypted um, using this model that is like um, uh, that is like invented here in uh, in this ecosystem. Um, yeah, I think that's the main thing I am getting at. Thanks. Um, all right, so I think we're out of time. This was my last slide, probably. Yeah, either way. So um, please, maybe for next week, um, think about it. Um, and also, like, what are ways we could support this in AFJ? I've added some things here. So uh, maybe we can um, continue this discussion next week, what people think about it and and, like, if we want to do it, like how can we uh, uh, do that in like the different ways to interact with the database, like ORM, domain specific language like Prisma or like just a query builder. Um, I think it could all work. Um, I think we should support multiple backends. Um, so next week, Ariel will present on the new wallet API. I needed some more time for that. And if you have anything, please let me know in the Discord or uh, wherever you can reach me. Cool. Thanks, everyone. And uh, I see you next week. Thanks. Thanks. Thank Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. -bye.